All right, guys. So you should have had a chance to write down something for your for your warm up questions here. So let's start with just um, with this first question. Have you ever used a website for a school assignment that's not credible? So if you think you've ever used a website that wasn't credible, I just want you to raise your hands. Let's just see in the group. Okay. Yeah, a lot of us, right? I'm sure I've done that too. Um, and part of the reason for that is you have to learn that skill, right? Like, I know when I was in school, I used whatever I could find. And one, nobody really told me that I needed to find sources until I was, like, late into high school. Um, and they didn't really teach me how to do it either. So that's – and that, a lot of us do that. Um, all right. So second part here, do you think it's important to check – the credibility sources. So what do you guys think? What do you think? I think that it's important to check the credibility of sources because um, you don't want to be like falsely accused of like doing plagiarism or maybe libel. Yeah, sure. What, what do you mean by libel? Like um, saying bad stuff about somebody that you maybe don't actually Okay, yeah, that's very good. Good job, Ethan. Go ahead. You need to make sure the stuff the uh, information you're getting from that website is correct and you're not just getting something that could be completely false. Yeah, very good. You want to add to that, Frazier? Um, so, uh, like, you could, you could do it like a bad summary. Um, like, plus you could also get like a really warped world view if you, if you go Sources. Yeah, sure. So if you're like reading stuff that's wrong, and then you, you that might be what you think is the truth, right? Very good. Okay, last one, Morgan. Go ahead. Like it's not really important for you to know what is true in your writing because you could not only have your like reputation as someone who only puts your stuff down damaged, but you could also give someone else that false for you. Yeah, very good. There's a responsibility there, right? Okay, very good job, guys. So that kind of takes us into what our, our uh, questions and, and objectives, our essential questions and objectives are going to be today. So the big question that we're going to be looking at is how can we evaluate the credibility of sources? How can we see if sources are, are, are good sources? And in order to figure that out, these are our objectives. So you guys are going to be using computers, so, so students will be able to use computers and the internet. And you're going to work together in your collaborative groups to identify, so, so find them, um, analyze them. So you're going, to, you're going to use some questions to, to try to get some information about these different websites. And then evaluate, so make, make a decision on whether you think that these websites are credible um, or not. And you're going to do it, we're going to specifically look at web sources today. There's lots of different sources, but we're, we're specifically going to use uh, or look at web sources. So... Um, First thing I want to do is I want to introduce to you guys this uh, method, okay? So it's kind of funny. The, the method that we're going to use today to evaluate sources is called the CRAP method, okay? So it's funny, uh, but when you think about it, the CRAP method, the C-R-A-A-P is an acronym. It stands for Currency, Relevancy, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. So these are kind of the big things we want to look at when we're looking at a source. So if you think about what the acronym spells out, it kind of makes sense because we're kind of looking to find bad sources. So, you know, anyway. So, um, so that's what we're going to be using. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to walk you guys through how to use the CRAP method, um, looking at a, a resource together. And then you guys are going to work in your collaborative groups to look at one. Uh, together, and then in, in the end, you guys will have a chance to do one on your own as well. So go ahead, if you haven't done it yet, go to my Blend page and open up the modules, and if you go to today in your modules, um, there's going to be a link to the Evaluating Sources lesson, and this website, and this slideshow is on it. So go ahead and open that up for me so that you can see this, because this is how we're going to link to the websites that we're going to look at today. So let me know if you need help finding that. Make sure this is going. So it's in Blend. 
So go to Friday in modules. Anybody else need help? All right, so this, uh, this picture here, that there's actually a link on it that you can go to to, to get to this, this worksheet that we're gonna use for the, the, for the prep method. Um, you guys have several of these in the, the packet that you picked up with, with your warm up today. So you guys are gonna be using the sheet as we look at some of these different websites. So go ahead and pull that out and, and open it up to one of those, those craft worksheets so you can kind of follow along as I'm going through these. And then also on your computer, there's a link here to the first site that we're going to look, look at. It says carbon mon monoxide. I want you to go ahead and click on that and open up that site as well. So I went ahead and uh, I, I cut the, the, the crap sheet into some smaller pieces so we could see it up here on the projector. We tried to do this earlier with my other class and they, it was kind of hard to see. So um, you guys just need the website up and then you have your crap sheet next to you. And I, but I'm going to split my screen up here so we can look at both of them. So the, the first set of things that you want to look at when you're looking at a resource is going to be currency. Okay, so what they mean by currency is, is the stuff on the site up to date? Okay, so there's a couple ways that you can, you can figure that out. So you can look to see if there is a date somewhere for when a website was published um, or posted. Um, if you can't find that, you can look to see when it was revised or updated. Uh, a lot of times, it, you're more likely to see the revised or updated uh, date. So a lot of websites aren't going to have necessarily a posted date, but a lot of times you find a revised and updated. If you're looking at a site, especially if it's, if it's an old site um, and you're not seeing any updates, yeah, it's probably a red flag for you that it's not a great source because you don't know if the information that you're getting is current. So. If we look in this one, so the, our website here is titled Carbon Monoxide Poisoning. You also want to look at you know, the titles and stuff just to get an idea of what you're um, looking at. Um, it says CDC up at the top. Uh, if we can kind of scan it a little bit just to see what it looks like. Kind of judge do we think it looks professional or not. Um, yes, Fred? Um, I, I noticed um, that, that the last review is normally kept in small dice, either at the top or the bottom of the website. Very good. Okay, so if we're, when we're looking for a published date or, or an updated date, a lot of times it's either going to be towards the top, towards the title, or towards the bottom. So if we look at this site, there is actually a review date. It says May 18th, 2023, if we scroll down a bit. Um, so this has been updated uh, pretty recently within the last year and a half here. Um, one of the other things that you can look at, so all these questions um, can help you kind of figure out this, this section of your evaluation. You're not going to answer all the questions. You don't need to. This is a tool. You're just trying to gather as much information as you can. So some of the stuff you'll find and some of you, some of it you won't. But you're hoping to gather enough information to where you can make a, an educated guess on whether or not this is, is, is good information or not. So we, have, we don't have a published date. We do have an updated date, so that's good. Um, you can look to see if the links work. So if we click on some links, looks like most of the links are working. So that's a good sign, too. If, if you're looking at a website and links aren't working, you know, again, that's a sign that things are not being updated and it might be out of date. Okay? Does that all that make pretty good sense? Okay. Yes. So then let's uh, let's look at the next criteria here. So relevance. So relevance is an interesting one. Um, 
relevance is going to be really important when you guys have a specific project. And actually, at the end of the year, you will be doing a research project in here, and we're going to come back to relevance when we're looking at those resources. For this specific activity, it's kind of hard to look at relevance because we don't have a, a real purpose other than just trying to practice evaluating. So I went ahead and crossed some of these out for you, and we're just going to focus on the who is the intended audience and would you be comfortable citing this source in your research paper? But we really can't answer that yet because we don't have a lot of information. Okay, so we're gonna save this until we get to the end, until until we've looked at, at more more of what this what is on this website. All right, so uh, authority. So some of the questions here: Who is the author, publisher, source, sponsor? What are the author's credentials? Uh, is the author qualified? Is the contact information such as publisher or email address on there? And does the re URL reveal anything? So, first of all, if we look up here, right at the top it says Centers for Disease Control, CDC. Have you guys ever heard of the CDC? Yeah. Where, where have you heard of CDC before? Where, where have you heard about it? I was like a preschool CDC. Oh, <laughs> that's not quite what we're talking about. But what, where did you hear it? I've heard that the CDC is like... Well, just tell me where, you, where you've heard about it. Don't tell me about it. Okay, I've heard it um, on like a couple of different like, news... Okay, it, it generally when, when they're on the news sites, what, are, what is the big thing that the CDC has been dealing with over the last three or four years here? Coronavirus and health. Yeah, yeah. So CDC, is, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a government agency. So if the CDC is sponsoring this, there's a, there's a good chance that... Um, any government agency that's sponsoring a uh, a website, usually that's a good sign. Yes, Frederick. Also, um, in, in the URL, it's .gov, which is usually reserved for uh, governments. Very good. So, and that's one of our questions here. Does the URL reveal anything about the, the authored source? So, generally, if you're seeing a .gov or a .edu, Okay, those are usually websites that you're pretty sure that, that you're going to be getting information that's been sourced. Government, because if the government is putting out information that can be proven to be false, they're going to get in trouble for that. EDU, that's stuff that has to do with education, and most of the times in education, anything that's being published has to be reviewed by other people that are in the field. So those are good signs. Now, that doesn't mean that if it's a .com or a .net or a .org that they're not good sources. It's just that the, the .gov and the .edu are like, you know, really good signs that you're, you're looking at something that, that's going to be pretty factual. Um, so, as far as what we can find in here, um, we said Centers of Disease Control, that's up at the top. I look through, does anybody see... A specific author, I, I don't, I don't think there are. I, a lot of, would you say? Oh, there's just a source. You, there's oh, okay, yeah. A lot of times when you're looking at government websites, it's a place that's collecting a lot of information from a lot of different people. So there's not going to be a specific author, um, but uh, you, there are some links down here that you can go to. Um, where you can get like general information, and I think we saw in the last class that there were links to where you could actually see leadership of CDC, and you can see some documents that people have contributed to the site, and they have their credentials on there, their doctors or um, scientists and things like that. Uh, phone number and email, what, what would we look for if we're looking for a way to, to, to call somebody or email on a website, what do you think? I think that at the very bottom, uh -huh. there's like other links if you were trying to contact them. Yeah. There's this phone number, 800-232-4636. Yeah, very good. Okay, so a lot of times down at the bottom, um, you, you, there, there, there might be a contact us button. If there's ways to contact a website, that's a good sign. If whoever's creating a website doesn't want to be contacted, that, that might be a, a red flag also. Not necessarily, but could be. And we already talked about the doctor. All right, you guys are doing good. All right, accuracy is our next big umbrella. So accuracy, we're talking about can we trust this information? Okay, so 
Uh, where are we getting the information from? Is there evidence supporting the information? Has it been reviewed? Um, can you verify it? So all these things, all these questions are kind of related to, is this information something that's being backed up, right? Um, so one of the things that I noticed on this page is there is a specific area down towards the bottom that says research and studies. So if you see terms like research, study, evidence, uh, documents, data, those are all terms that, that, that are going to lead you possibly to places where you're going to get some support for whatever's on, on a web source. So if we click on it, um, there's a bunch of the doc, these documents. And, and the way these are written, if you're seeing like the author and then uh, the name of a journal, these are things that have been published. These, th this is showing that the stuff that's on this website is going to be pretty reliable. Um, also says, so source, so somebody said something about source to me before. Reese, did you see something with source on there? Uh, yeah. What did you see? Um, I saw that like underneath the last review there was a source from the National Center of Environmental Okay, yeah. Where, where was it at here? Uh, mine was under the last review. The last what? Uh, the last review. It looks different. Oh, okay, let's see. Okay, you might just be on a separate page on there. Okay, so yeah, I have written that down too. So National Center for Environmental Health, that, that it actually says that's the source, and again, that's a government agency, so that, that's a good good sign. And then guys, just like professionalism, is there, does it sound like it's biased? Are there errors? Um, does it look professional? And this does, so those are all good signs. Okay, right, uh, finally, purpose. So what is the reason for the information? Okay, so this one, in, in a lot of these government sites, it's going to be to teach or to inform. They're trying to give out information, okay? Um, some of the questions under purpose are, uh, do the author sponsors make their intentions or purpose clear? Like they don't specifically say in this document, the purpose of this is to teach you about carbon monoxide poisoning, but, but you can get that, you can infer it based on the information. And it seems like most of the information is factual and objective. It doesn't appear to be biases. Um, so overall, what would you guys, do you guys think that this is a, a is a, will be a reliable or a credible source? Yes. yes. Okay, definitely, good. So if we go back to that, that one uh, box that we skipped, the relevance, I, I would say, yeah, this appears to be a credible source. Okay. All right. Very good. So what I what we're gonna do here is I'm I've been talking for a while, so we're gonna give you guys an opportunity to do some of this on your own. Um. So before we go there, just a, a few follow up questions. So did we answer every question that was in on the sheet? Uh, no. No, we didn't answer all of them. That's okay. You don't have to answer all of them. So. We found a good source, so is it possible to find a good source even if we, if we can't find all of the information? Yes. Yeah. Um, is it, do you think it's possible for a source to not meet all the criteria and still to be the source? Yeah, we said that. Is it possible for a source to meet most of the criteria and still not be good? What do you think about that? Yes. I think there probably is. Well, there's a couple you, you guys are going to look at today and, and, and when we do the second part of this. Um, that might be a little difficult. So we'll, we'll see where we come up on this. All right, so go ahead and click to the next slide in your slideshow here. And you guys can click on the, the second link here. So this is your collaborative group activity. You guys are gonna work in your groups together. You're gonna turn to another one of the crap sheets in your, in your packet. And I want you guys to work together to look at this uh, dihydrogen monoxide website and uh, see if you can figure out whether this is a credible source or not, and we'll, we'll talk about it again, okay? So uh, I'm going to put up the timer. Let's go for about five minutes here, and then we'll check in with each other. Thank <laughs> you. 
your hand if you feel like this is a is a credible source okay raise your hand if you think it's a credible source okay 
All right, raise your hand if you don't think that it's credible. Okay, a lot, a lot of people don't think it's credible. Okay, so let, let's talk about this. So there's some things in here that, based on our prep sheet, look pretty good, right? Uh, has it been updated recently? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When was it updated? Today. Yeah. Yeah, today. Okay, it, it was, it's been updated recently. So that, that's a good, good thing. Do the links work? Yes. Yeah. Um, is there information on the site? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there are some things. So going back to our follow-up questions, yeah, you, you know, just because you're finding some good things there doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's a good site. All right, so what are some of the problems? So, Frazier, what, what, what did you find in there? What they're, what, what they're trying to say is killing you, it, it, it's just water. It is just water. It's, a, it's another name for water. But is... If you click on a lot of the links, some of it is not necessarily false, right? Like some of it says this, things like if you inhale dehydrogen monoxide, you could die, right? Technically, that's true, but it's super misleading, right? They're being they're being misleading. Uh, Colin, go ahead. Um. Well, it says some. It says um. Dehydrogen monoxide is dangerous. Monoxide is linked to gun violence. Right. On one of these. So that that doesn't really make any sense, right? Yeah. But that that is technically true. If, if you if you don't drink water, you do die. You can't shoot people. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Anything could be linked to it because everybody drinks water. Morgan, go ahead. Bill, so it says here in the description, it says um like to prevent gun violence, it's dangerous to drink water. Right. So it's like this is not unbiased. This is so many videos. Did you notice how how is he getting his uh, his data? What, did did you, anybody see where it's? What, so he actually oh, did you see a vendor? I saw some government websites. So he does link to some government websites that are legitimate sites, but they don't say anything about dehydrogen monoxide. But he actually has a place on here where you can add your own data. Okay, so. Uh, has a teacher ever told you not to use Wikipedia on? Oh, yeah. Okay. So part of the reason is is that anybody can update that stuff, and a lot of it is not uh, is not sourced. Now some of it is probably true, but when you're looking at sources, you don't want to be getting information from anybody. Avril. So what I noticed that like, if you click on the sites and then get out, it, it becomes green, and also in the like example of the spam email, it says that. Uh, Unfortunately, someone has been illegally sending out the following spam email messages claiming to be from the DHMO, and then like it's not, so like the people, they say it's not from their organism, so it's like people are trying to trick people to like maybe give them money. Right, and in any, any, any source, web source is asking for money, is going to be a little problematic, right? Anytime you're asking for money, there, there's a chance for influence of what's on there, okay? I, I love that you guys have, have more to say, but if we, we gotta we gotta move on. So you guys are doing really good there. It seems like you got most of it. Let, let's look at our our questions from our crap sheet just real quick. So currency, it, we said it was pretty current and the links work. Okay, relevance. We're gonna wait till the end. Um, uh, oh, this is the wrong one. Go back. Yeah, it is a parody website. Oh. Okay, I don't know what happened to that. So, looking at uh, relevance, we said we come back to. So, authority, he, he doesn't he doesn't have any credentials, or at least none that we can see on the on the website. Uh, accuracy, there are links to information, but they either don't relate to dehydrogen monoxide or it's just linking back to another one of his blogs. And you don't really want to take blogs for, for factual information either. Um, and we already said the purpose was to, to entertain, right? It, 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 it's a joke, okay? So you guys did really well on that one, good job. Um, all right, so let's look at our, our, our last activity that we're gonna do here. So, um, you're gonna you're gonna go ahead and start on it now. If we're we're probably not gonna have time to finish it today, so we will uh, we'll finish it for homework and then I'll I'll collect it next time. So let's go ahead and scroll scroll down to task two in your in your blend page there. 
So there are two other websites here. So Help Save the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus and Recovery of Endangered and Threatened Species. Okay, so I want you to look at those two. Use your crap sheet, write some notes on there, okay? Make sure that you, you do, you don't have to answer all the questions, but make sure that you uh, gather enough information to where you can evaluate it and, may, and tell me whether you think it's good or not. That you're gonna put in the relevance section, okay? You're gonna tell me whether you think it's a good source. Now, I don't think you're gonna finish early, but if you did, there is an extension. You can choose your own subject and, and use a website in the, the crap sheet to try to evaluate it. There's also, in your, in your uh, document here, there are some ideas for further study. So if you wanna know more about how to use the, the crap sheet or just how to evaluate sources in general, there's some links here. But for the last part of class here, I want you to go ahead and work on these uh, individually because I wanna see what you can do. Um, and then uh, we'll stop right at the end of class just to, to conclude everything. Okay, so you guys can go ahead and work. Um, and then we'll do our conclusion in just a little bit here. <laughs> Work on this one by yourself, guys. I want to see what you figured out. Remember on that relevancy one, that the couple of questions we're answering there, go ahead and wait till the end. You want to collect as much information as you can before you make your determination. You don't want to base it on just one thing. So guys, unfortunately, we're running out of time here. So you need to, you're gonna do these, these last two. If you didn't finish them, you're doing for homework, and then we'll. I do want to talk about these two um, next time. Um, but before we go, I just want to go back to our essential questions or our objectives, just to make sure that we met these. So our central question was, how will we evaluate the credibility of web sources? So what's the tool that we are we're using today? What was it? The craft method. Okay, so we have a tool to do that now, and there's lots of questions that we can use. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Uh, 
And then our objectives, so students will be able to use computers and the internet. Did we use computers and the internet? Yes. Okay. Did you get to work in your groups? Yes. yes. Uh, did you, we accessed at least, and did, it, did we did we look at these web sources and try and try to determine whether they were credible or not? Yes. Okay, so we analyzed. And did we make some determinations of whether these are good sources? Yes. yes. So it looks like you met our goals. So very good job. Let's get cleaned up. Those are gonna ring here in just a minute.